Good morning, beautiful people. It is so good to be home again. And thank you so much for your warm welcome. And thank you so much for your love and your concern. The scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians 13. I'm not going to read it. Um, but there's something in my heart that I want to share with you all. Um, after the events that happened that we won't go into, there was a certain amount of fear that I walked around in. I had never been afraid to, uh, to show up, you know, never been afraid to be outside of my home or afraid to move in community, but there was a tangible fear that I actually felt this time. And I felt as if I was unprotected. I felt as if because of my skin, I was a target, and in some cases I am. However, the Lord spoke to me and said, I have not given you a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I've given you community to cover and support you so you are not alone. First congregation, I want to thank you for your love and your support because I am not alone. The work that you do in community, the work that you do in the world is exceptional and I thank you for that. I thank you for your love and commitment to me for the last three years. Give yourselves a hand. So what is, the, what is the appropriate response for what we've been going through in the last few weeks? What do we do with this? How should we feel? What should we think? What should our next action be? What is that? The real answer is, I don't know. I move from fear to contemplation. And in my heart, I've been asking God, what am I supposed to do? I had a whole sermon prepared for today, and the Lord spoke to me and said, not that. <laughs> so I'll say this. Hey, Angela. I'll say this to you. Character is not what we do when we're in public. Character, good character, is what you do when you're by yourself. These open acts of racism that's been going on, they're showing up in public, yes, but the real thing is they're spreading that kind of hate in private at the dinner table. What's really being said when I walk by and pass you? What are your true thoughts of me? What do you see when you look at me? Do you see me as equal to you? Do you see me as whole and strong? and valued. What is it that you see? The thing is, when I look at you, that's what I see. Strong people, loving people, kind people. And I hope that you see the same thing in me. The only way for us to get through it is to go through it. There's some hard conversations that need to be had. We cannot ignore racism. Yes, I said the word, racism. It is not just privilege, it is racism. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And the only way for us to deal with this is through the love of Jesus Christ. Yes. It's the only way. Love trumps hate every time. Jesus was a mystery. Nobody understood that he was going to go to the cross and die and give us in return grace. Grace was the mystery of God. Grace is the empowerment of God which will lead us to the place where we need to go in this moment. Yes, the energy has shifted. Yes, we have turned a corner. No, we can't see what's before us. But if God be in us, if God work through us, we can make it together. Amen. Now you know me, I'm a Pentecostal preacher, so I need your feedback. Okay? So... <laughs> When I say amen to you, you say amen back. Let's practice. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I, I put on my Facebook post today how proud I am about being black and gay. How 
how good I feel about myself for being strong for 44 years, walking through hatred, bigotry, and everything else, but I'm still here in my right mind. I've got a reason to be proud of me. I didn't hear that. She said amen. Amen. Hey, women. That's what she said. Hey, women. You think that I'm not going to be proud of myself? When I have walked through all the shame and guilt and all the stuff the world sends me, and I'm here in my right man's mind still singing, still preaching, still teaching, still loving, and I'm not going to be proud of who I am? No, ma'am. I'm strong and I'm proud. Haven't always been that way. But thank God the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This battle that we fight is not a flesh and blood battle. Mm. But it's a spiritual battle. There's a real enemy in the spirit realm that fights against who we are in God. That would cause us to take our light and hide it, hide it under a bushel. That would take our salt and make it lose its savor. But I say no. I will shine bright through whatever the opposition is. I am the salt of the earth and I will give this world my flavor until I draw my last breath. And even then I still will be in heaven giving God glory. It is not okay to be silent anymore. It is not okay to be supporting back anymore. But we must stand together, present and accounted for in this battle. No one should be alone. But we should stand together proud. My suffering is your suffering. My victory is your victory. Your victory is my victory. Amen. Amen. There was a certain amount of uh, pressure that was on my chest. Um, Mm. I can't even describe how I was feeling. But the Lord moved me swiftly to forgiveness. If those families <laughs> can stand in that court days after losing their loved one and say, we forgive you. Who am I to not give my community a forgiving heart? How can I not forgive? The only way for us to join in this thing together, another thing we have to do, we have to forgive one another. And forgive ourselves. The past mistakes we've made, the wrongs that we have said, the ways that we have treated people unkindly, we have to forgive ourselves and be real about that we did it. Amen. Amen. It has not always been good. We have not always made the right decisions. We have not always made the right choices. But thank God for his grace that covers us all. Amen. Amen. So what do we do? <laughs> what, what do we do? What do we do? How, how do we refocus ourselves? I think those families gave us a perfect example. We cannot walk to church and step over the person that's laying on the street, feel comfortable eating while other people are going hungry, stand and watch suffering and turn a blind eye to it because we've already given a donation to somewhere, to something. We cannot do that. But we must walk in this thing together. I hope what you hear today, I hope you hear this in love. In no way am I accusing you of anything. I don't want you to hear that. I am speaking a message that's to the entire world. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen? So my experience here, when I first came, I didn't necessarily feel like I, I, it was a good fit for me. I almost didn't come back. <laughs> But I started meeting individuals in the community of the church that offered me so much love and support 
Um, I can help but come back because I love you all so much. Thank you. I love you all so much and I hope you know that. I hope you know that I carry you in my heart everywhere I go and I speak of you often because you all are a model of what we do in community. Thank you. Have I said that enough? <laughs> um, will I be back as often as you will have me? I'll be here. I guess if I could leave one thing with you today, um, <laughs> it's difficult, thank you Rachel, for waking up and walking out the house and being in trouble for being black and gay. It ain't easy to get up and go out. It ain't easy to walk through this stuff. It's not easy to feel this. The thing is, can we just be real, real? Okay. If a white person walks into a job or an interview or fills out an application, you have the choice of whatever you want to choose, other, white, Native American, whatever you choose to be, you have the choice to mark that box. When I walk in, no choice but to be black. Can't choose other. I have to choose to be black. Now, there's nothing wrong with me being black, but when they see that box checked on the application, my application may go to the side. I know that I'm qualified to do the work that I do, but it's been hard to get it done. I'm 44 and just now being able to get it done. Why? Why is there so much opposition against me doing this kind of work? It's because it's our nature. It's what we've been doing for so long. We, oh my God. For so long it's become almost invisible to us. Now is the time for us to wake up and call it what it is. There's 10 black people up on that hill at PSR. It's our job to go out and get some more and put them on the hill. And support the seminarians who are up there. It's our job to do that. How can we help one another? Not just in what we say, but in what we do. You're here today because you're a doer, not just a sayer. A doer of the word is not afraid of any opposition. And even in fear, they still walk. What would I leave for you today? When I came here, uh, actually, before I left the home, my home today, my nephew was getting dressed. And I told him that I was going to preach at First Congo. And he said, bend down. I bent my head down. He kissed me on my forehead and put the sign of the cross on my head and said, preach well. So as I stand here, I know that I represent him. And I know and I'm confident that he will grow to be a good man, a strong man, a loving man, a kind man, because of the example that I set for him. But really, he set an example for me. Hatred is, we don't come into this world knowing how to hate. We don't know how to hate. We learn how to hate. It's automatic that we come into this world loving. When a, mother, when a baby sees his mother for the first time, the baby looks and cries and will hold his arms out and want to be touched and held and have compassion and communication. That's how we come into this world, not divisive and separated. When have you ever seen a child that did not want to be touched? When the child is in trouble, the first thing that child does, daddy pick me up, mama pick me up, because we need that kind of support. We learn how to hate. It's automatic for us to love. So if we do anything, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that would exalt itself above the knowledge of God. In our minds, casting down negative thoughts. And lifting up the name of Jesus. Casting down negative behaviors. And lifting up the spirit of community. Casting down our own prejudice. And lifting up the spirit of true acceptance. And only when we do this, can we march together as one community?
There's a time right now to do just what we did 40 years ago, 50 years ago. We have to mobilize ourselves. And not in little private, small groups, but we got to move together. It's a big devil out there. We need to take him down. Amen. Amen. And the only way we win is if we win together. Yes. Will you stand on your feet with me? I'm going to ask you to do something we don't normally do, but it's in me today. Can we lift our hands and just open our mouths and fill it with praise for God, for what God has done? That sounds like thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. God, you are worthy. God, you are more than enough. God, you are more than able. Say it with me. Whatever the love words that you have to God, just speak them out. Let your praise be heard. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my mind. Thank you for my spirit. Hey, thank you for your glory. Hallelujah. Thank you that you're in the temple today. Hallelujah. That you are high and lifted up. Glory to God. And your train fills the temple. Thank you for the power that's in your name. Thank you for the power that's in your blood. Thank you for the spirit that's in your spirit. Hallelujah. Do this with me. Clap those hands as hard as you can. Come on, clap them. Clap those hands. Hallelujah. And if you have any reason to be thankful, say thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We'll make it together! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Amen.